Hey friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be learning how to use the Dominion script. It's a free download, check out the link in the description, and it's a fantastic tool for quickly creating interactive user interfaces like this After Effects mockup, but also grids, tunnels, as well as complex compositions with tons of textures like in the Dominion trailer. Let's take a look at how it works. All right, so here in After Effects, I have a composition started. I'm just going to go over to, I've got my script loaded up here. I'm just going to click Create Window. Now, the first thing you need to know about Dominion windows is that they are all just shape layers and can be styled as such. So I could change the stroke width, the color, any of the fill parameters. I could add other effects on here, uh, like trim strokes or wiggle paths, any of that kind of stuff. The other thing you need to know is that all Dominion windows are structurally exactly the same. The only thing that differentiates them is their hierarchy. So if I duplicate this layer and then parent it to the previous layer, you'll see that it's going to pop inside the previous window because that's now its parent. If I duplicate that layer again, now there are two windows that are both parented to our main window, and so they become siblings. But if I duplicate this layer again, there's a third sibling, but now if I parent it to this one, now it's going to be a child of this window. So it's very easy to create new windows. You can do it just by duplicating, but you can also do it through the interface. So I'll just delete a few of these. Let's say I want to create three windows inside this one. I've got three loaded in here in the count. I'm just going to hit Create Window. Now I can select this parent window and change the orientation over in the effects panel to column. And it'll change the orientation of all its children. If I now select each of these three children and click Create Window again, it will create three more children in each of those three. Or every window that has children has control over those children. So here you can see the padding. I have control over the padding for all the children of this window. I have control over the orientation for those children, as well as the specifics of how those children are sized. So in this case, I have auto sized children selected which just means that all of the children are going to evenly divide the space that's available within this parent window. If I uncheck that, then I can select each of these individual children and change their percentage to whatever I desire. So I can set this one to, let's make this 10, this one to maybe 50, and as you can see, this one is just going to fill in whatever space is available. So changing this number is not going to make any difference because it's only these first two that are defining the size that the third one has available. All right, so something you need to be aware of is that children are always calculated according to their stacking order in the timeline here. So the topmost window or the leftmost in a column orientation is going to be the first child and it's going to get the first priority for its percentage. The last child according to the stacking order is the one that's going to left get left out without a vote. So if I change this uh, orientation to column, you'll see the same is true. The leftmost window is the top one, then the middle one is the next one. The last child does not have a vote in its size. It just gets the leftovers, just like in real life. Another option I have on the parent here is that I can choose prioritize center. And what that means is it's only going to really look at the center, either the center one or the center two, if it's an even number, and give that child deference on the size. All the other ones on the outside are going to defer to it. And the last box we have here is inherit roundness. So I check that on, and then I select the parent. I can change the roundness of the window, and the children will follow along with that roundness, keeping in mind the padding that they have. So to make this a little more evident, let me just delete these two. So this one only has one child now. If I get that parent and change the padding, you can see that the roundness is changing depending on the amount of padding I have. So if you get far enough, there'll be no roundness. I can increase this, of course. All right, so when you've created a bunch of windows, it can sometimes be tricky to navigate them. When you've got a lot of padding on, it's not so hard. I can click in here and decide which window I want. 
but sometimes you need a little help especially when the padding is low so let me just um, yeah, I'm just gonna recreate all these set the padding to zero set the padding to zero here I'll create three children for this one select these three and create three more so now it's hard to select which window we want to grab without going to the timeline trying to figure out which one's which so I've built in some functions over here this first button will get the parent of whatever window I have currently selected so now I have that parent I can control the padding on that one I can click that again to get the in this case the root because that's the parent and change the padding on that one but I can also push this button to get the children of the selected layer so now I have these three main children selected I can also push this button here to get the siblings of the selected window sometimes that can be really helpful and then this final button will create get a mat that's been created based on that window we'll talk more about that later all right so the only other thing we need to know is that if a window is not yet active on the timeline it will pop out of the flow of the layout so if I have windows that I don't want to appear yet I can just take them and move them back like so until I want them to pop on in other words they will only take up space in the layout when their endpoint has been reached now if there's a case where you want a window to hold space but not be visible then of course you can just turn the opacity down to zero then it's still going to take up space but just not be visible all right so that's the basic idea any dominion window will have this tag at the beginning bracket dom bracket and that will identify it as a dominion window the size of all children windows is determined by their parents the only exception of course is the root window here you can by the way at any time change the name of these as long as you don't mess with that tag at the beginning so I'll just call this root the root can be sized using the size and width of the rectangle so if you just double tap E on your keyboard it'll bring up the size I can unhook this and change these dimensions to anything I want and of course all the children will follow suit now sometimes it's nice to have those controls separately what I like to do is just select this and if you have the anti-static toolbox installed you can go to utilities property manager and now I have I can separate these X and Y dimensions and I've got them on a separate layer so it's a little easier to control instead of having to dig into these settings so that's the basics of the Dominion system. It provides you a few parameters that you can play with that makes wrangling windows fun. Now let's get into some more advanced stuff. All right, so we're back to our basic example here. We can head into the Extras tab now. And we'll see there's more things to play with here. Now sometimes it's really helpful to have uh, some points on these windows that we can attach things to. So for example, I'm going to grab this window right here. And I want to attach something to the top left corner of it. I can push this button and it's going to create a null that will stick to the top left of that window so just as an example I'm going to create a new shape layer and uh, we're going to make this a little smaller and we'll turn down that stroke width a bit and then if I take this circle let me just give it a name here and I uh, shift parent it to that null that we created now it will stick to the top left of that window and again so we can change the size and shape of our root window we can change its padding we can change the padding of this parent window no matter what we do that null is going to stick to the top left so I just have uh, some easy ways to create a bunch of nulls here Go back to our Dominion, and um, here we can create nulls for all four corners. And you'll see that each of these nulls, when they're created, they have a um, layer control on them, as well as a position. So if you decide later you want this to be in a different position, you can change this from the top left to, say, the top center, or the center of the window. All of these things which can be created um, using these points here. So we've got the top left, the center, the right. You get the idea. There's also an inset slider here. So if I um, decide I want this window, but I want to inset these uh, a few pixels, I can change that slider, then push the button. 
those ones are created here. Let me just grab these so I can find out where they are. There we go. I'm going to change the color of these real quick. Now, if I take this circle, I'm going to duplicate it four times. And you can just parent, shift parent to each of these. Now we see those four circles are following the nulls, which are inset, uh, what have we decided? 22 pixels. Uh, we can change this later, of course, to something else. And they're always going to stick to that position, no matter what the parents are doing. All right, so we know how to add nulls to any of our windows. We're going to skip this texture and matte section for a moment and talk about gradient fills. So uh, I'm going to click on this window and just choose one of these four gradient fill types. Now, by default, it's going to change this to a black and white gradient, linear gradient fill. Now, unfortunately, through scripting, we cannot alter the colors of a gradient. It's just not something that we have access to through scripting. So uh, what we can do though is open up this window, the contents, uh, drill down until you find the Dominion gradient. And if you open that up here, you can click on this colors and choose edit gradient. And then you can choose to edit this gradient to whatever you want it to be. I'll just make it something bright right now so we can see it. And then if you... Uh, copy that color from the Dominion gradient. Once you have a gradient applied to any of the other windows that you want it to, so let's just go ahead and apply one to, to all of these children here. Uh, now we can come up here to the search bar and type in gradient. And if you just select that Dominion gradient, you can paste and the colors will be pasted. It's kind of a pain, it's a little bit of a workaround, but that's just how it is. Now the nice thing about this is that if we just copy and paste the colors, um, the style and direction of our gradient will not change. So if I had this one set to go horizontal instead of vertical, um, here we can make one that's diagonal, one way or another. In fact, you can select all of these children windows and choose this random button and it will just choose one of these four random directions for those gradients to go in. Now the great thing about this, unlike typical gradient fills, is that the gradients you know, will keep their size and dimensions no matter how much you scale them. So if you ever worked with a gradient fill, you know that um, it can be a bit of a pain. Just open this up because these start and end points um, will, will not move with the shape of your rectangle. But uh, we're taking care of all the math in here so that now those things will adjust no matter what we do with our windows. If ever you want to change the direction of a gradient fill, just click on the button again. So here uh, we've got this one. I want to change it to a diagonal. If I don't like that, just click it again. It'll just swap those colors. Now we have some crazy gradients on all our windows that are going to follow the dimensions of their parents. All right, so now let's talk about texturing. Now, a texture can be any uh, footage item in After Effects. That can be a still image. It can be a pre-composition. It can be some raw footage. Um, here I've gone ahead and just created some. I'm just going to drag these in one by one. So what I do is add a add a texture and then I'm gonna shift hold down shift to select one of my windows and then if I just hit this fit to window button it's just gonna pop it right in there now uh, what I'll do is probably I'm gonna open up the parameters here on this size control for our root window and just add a quick wiggle expression uh, wiggle 1 300 and I'll just copy that and add that to the Y as well so now our window window is just going to bounce around in its size. But you can see that that texture is just sticking to that window. Let's go back and add another one, number two. And this time I'm just going to move it out of the way and then grab this window and fit that to the window. And let's get number three and add it to this tall one over here, fit window. 
All right, so you can see each one just sticks as you would expect it to. If I select any of these textures, there's a button over here that says maintain aspect ratio, which we can check on. You can also see that here before you add it on. And what that's going to do is just make sure that it always stays the same aspect ratio no matter how it's bouncing. These ones, you can say squatch and stretch based on the size of the window. So they might get real small and flat sometimes. This one is going to always maintain the same aspect. Now in each of these cases, as we have added a texture to that window, it's also automatically added a mat. So you can see this number three texture is being matted by this mat. Now in this case, these windows don't need a mat because they're keeping the exact same size, shape, and weight. But we've created a mat anyway so that if you decide later on that you want to um, you know, change this to maintain aspect ratio, it's going to need to be cut off on the top or the bottom or left or right, whichever side won't fit in there. And then there's also an option here just to create a mat. So uh, if I don't want to add a texture right away, but I want to create a mat, I can just click this button. A mat will be created, and then I can use that. Say, for example, I have a big uh, texture that I want to put in there that I don't want to move with the box at all, but I just want to be matted by it. Now I can uh, grab this one and set its mat to this window. So it's just going to stay static, but you're just going to basically seeing through that window to the texture below. So one thing we cannot do is rotate or scale any of these squares. Because the truth is that all of these are, again, they're just shape layers, and their true center is right in the middle of the composition. So if I try and rotate this, it's going to rotate around the center of the composition. Same with the scale. But we can rotate this first, our root window. And everything's going to move with it. Same with the scale. We can position it. We can change the positions of these if we want to have them, say, just slide outward or inward. Because all those positions are relative. But um, the rotation and the scale of any children is not really going to work. There are some ways to get around that using a transform matrix, but uh, for this first release, I'm just keeping it simple. All right, well, that's about it for this one. Please check out my GitHub page to download the script. If you don't know how to install it, take a look at my video on the anti-static toolbox where you'll find some easy to follow instructions. And I'll see you next time.